hey there. Before you go and grab that wax toilet ring that you've heard makes a fantastic waterproofer, or the baby oil that you know might work in a pinch, I want to recommend that you stay with us just for the next few minutes because we're going to make a very simple and natural chemical-free leather balm and waterproofer. I can't tell you how much that's going to be vitally important in the event that even if we just have an exceptionally cold winter, mentally and physically it can drag you down if you have cold wet feet in those boots of yours. So stay with us in the next few minutes as we make the most wonderful and natural weatherproofing, waterproofing leather balm. Waterproofing boots can actually be a fine art, a, uh, almost a science for some people that take great pleasure in figuring out exactly what works and doesn't. Now, incidentally, there are so many different products out there, I can't name them all specifically and address the pros and cons on this specific video. So I wanna make sure that I tell you before you watch this and think it's the rest of the information, make sure you watch our video on actually how to waterproof and put this balm on your boots. We'll have that in a separate video that's posted a week after this one is on YouTube. All right. But for this, it's very simple and I won't get into all the particulars, but you're going to need three items to make a good waterproofer. You're wanting something like a wax that's going to be reliable and natural and is accepted by that good leather that your boots are made of. Beeswax is hands down everyone's favorite and the most natural product that you can get. And you can usually buy it in either a puck form about like this or in little pellets. I've seen it in kind of medium sized pellets as well, but whatever form you get is great. And if you have your own bees and can harvest your own wax, even better. But what you're going to want is a version of it that's easy for you to measure out and, and uh, melt down. If you get it in the puck form, we can just grate it up with a regular food grater and that'll be just fine. But today, the easiest and simplest is the pellets and so that's what we'll use to measure out the beeswax that we'll use. All right. Next, you're going to need some sort of an in-between, not oil, not beeswax that's super hard, but something that's soft and that's going to condition and really soak into that leather and do well. My favorite that we're going to use today is 100% cocoa butter. You can get it at a Walgreens or at a convenience store oftentimes. Just make sure that it has no other ingredients. You don't want any chemicals or any additives to this. It needs to be 100% cocoa butter. And let me say this, you also, if you don't like this, you could use coconut oil, but remember it is an oil, so it gets solid and oily and it's going to be more oily if you end up using that instead of this. Or you could use shea butter, which is going to be a little bit softer and smoother, but very comparable to cocoa butter, all right? And then the third ingredient that we're going to need is some sort of an oil that just soaks into the boots and gives us shine and softens and conditions the leather, but doesn't break down anything about the leather or the binding, the stitching that's around it. My favorite that we're going to use today is castor oil. And you could also use, or in place of this, you could use jojoba oil. You could also use almond oil. Um, there are, there are a number of different ones that you could use, but those are probably my favorites that I would recommend as almond or jojoba or castor oil. Whichever of those three is your favorite. This one, incidentally, I'm going to post a link below so you can read it for yourself. An old article, I think it was written in 1888 by some folks that just swear by it as their only thing that they treat their leather boots with to make them not only soft and supple, but also completely waterproof. And they were thrilled with the results. I know that 1888 is not our, uh, the one that we're supposed to always listen to, but an article that old means it's been around a while and has proven itself to be a good option for your boots. All right, what we're gonna do is measure out these in a one to one to three ratio. Now, if you're someone who really prefers a paste wax type feel where you have to really scrape into it to slather it on your leather, do it in a one to one to two ratio. And that, by that I mean, one part beeswax, 
one part of that butter, that in between, and then three parts or two parts, whichever you prefer, of the oil that we're going to add to it. I like mine just a little bit more like a leather balm, so it conditions and softens and adds a shine to it, and it's a little bit thinner, but it's going to be something I can layer on and really get into with my leather. I like it just a little bit better. So I'm gonna make it one to one to three, and for that, what I'm gonna need is a way to measure that because we're talking about weight, not volume, and that's important here. So you've got two options. Let me show you what I've got. Here's one option. Now, this is what you can get at the store. The thing is, it runs on batteries, and I hadn't used this for about a month, so a couple of days ago I got it out to use it, and sure enough, when I hit the on button, it's saying low battery. That's exactly what would happen in an emergency situation. Once the batteries go bad on this, you're gonna be left without any way to measure things. So I wouldn't count on this as your only means. This is not as effective but pretty close and has been used for many, many years by our grandparents and the, their parents and grandparents is something about like this scale. This is from my grandmother and no, it isn't exactly as perfect to the very nth degree as the digital version that I can get nowadays, but it is reliable and there's something to say for reliability. It also has a little knob that I can adjust if I need to, to get it just right. So, this is what I would recommend all of us get, and you can find one of these in an old antique store, or just hit up an old um, aunt or grandmother that might have one of these in a back pantry that she's willing to go ahead and give to you. So, once we've got a way to measure the weight of this, we're gonna go ahead and prepare ourselves to put it in a double boiler, and that's our next step. The actual making of this is going to go pretty quick, so follow with me. You're going to want a double boiler, and many of you already have something like that. I'm actually using my grandmother's Revereware stainless steel pan, and I'm going to just put about half an inch of water right in the bottom. I already started heating it up so that it would be quicker for this video, but I want just enough to make some good steam. And then I'm going to put this little stainless steel pan on top that hovers over that water, and I'm gonna turn it up probably to about three quarters of the um, way on my burner there so that it heats up quickly. You're gonna to wanna to put in the beeswax first, and as soon as it melts, you're gonna put in the cocoa butter. So let's go ahead and start with these little pellets. We'll put them right in the bottom, and we're just gonna kinda of stir it continually. I'm stirring it with some little bamboo sticks here, I think, but whatever you've got. Just remember it is going to be oily, so it needs to be probably the handle of a wood spoon or just a stainless steel spoon to stir this is gonna be just fine. These are going to melt rather quickly, but give yourself four or five minutes of that. And then we'll add the cocoa butter, let it melt completely, and then we'll incorporate the castor oil. That's about as easy as this gets. Anyone can do it. And while this is melting, let me just tell you this. Whatever kind of old tin that you've got is probably going to work great for this. I have two that I would recommend. An Altoids tin is always perfect for something like this when you're making a shoe polish type uh, balm. But I've got this wonderful old mixed fruit tin that's round and there's something so easy about reaching into a round tin. That's what we're going to put ours in today because when it solidifies, I can even take this and if I wanted to remelt it, just a little bit before I use it on my boots, I could set this right on a trivet on the fireplace itself or right near there and let it just warm up just a smidgen, keeping my eye on it at all times before I use it to um, condition my boots. But that's the tin we're gonna use today. Whatever you've got is gonna work fine. And this is already getting melted up for us. All right, we're gonna get our cocoa butter and thankfully, this just comes so simple, it, it actually is its own little <laughs> thing in there. It just comes right out, and I'm going to put that in there and let it melt also. And this will take just a little bit longer, but it won't take long. For this simple recipe, I'm putting in one ounce of beeswax, one ounce of cocoa butter, and three ounces of castor oil. All right, we're ready for the oil. 
the oil cooled it down just a smidgen and is a different consistency so you'll want to just work with it and it'll all melt in and incorporate together over the next 60 seconds or so and once it's all thoroughly in there together and you see a perfectly smooth liquid you're ready to pour it into your tin you want to fill it to within just about an eighth of an inch or a fourth of an inch of the top of the tin and then we're going to wait for about 20 minutes for this to set up and it's going to get cloudy and turn into a solid which is just what you want to make it into that balm all we need to do is put the lid on this set it in the pantry and wait for the next time that we need to condition and waterproof our boots or shoes or whatnot so make sure you tune in for that video wasn't that incredibly easy? I can't believe that I actually have gone online and seen creams just like this that were over 100 United States dollars. That makes no sense. So now you have your own version that you can make that is going to be just as effective or more. Stay with us because we're going to link in the next video that we make on how to actually waterproof your boots. That's an important technique. So now that you've got the balm down, share this video with someone you love. Take the time to go out and be a blessing to someone this week and join us back next week when we actually take it and waterproof our boots together. Until I see you again, God bless you and go out and be a blessing to someone today. Hey, before you go, I want to share this quick word out of the book of John in the Holy Bible. It's in chapter 3 and it's verse 17. It says this, For God didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. <laughs> now go spread the word. <laughs>